So when you open up your kit, you've got a few things in front of you. You will have three full length pieces of T-Track. These are 914 mils long. We're gonna have to cut them down and you can just do that with a standard hacksaw and then give the ends that you've cut a little tiny sand with a scrap of sandpaper and that'll clean them up nicely. It's pretty easy to cut through these with hacksaw. It's just aluminium, so it's pretty soft. This is your full length, the 914. And we, for this design, like I said, this is 450 mils wide. So I cut these down to a little bit less than 450 mils and that left me with a tiny bit of off cut that was too small to use. So depending on the size that you decide, uh, you might end up with more offcut, which is actually really useful. If you made a, um, a sled that was only 300 mils wide, you could actually get three pieces out of each full length 900. So you'll end up using two pieces of T-Track on the base, and you'll use one full length piece of T-Track in your fence. You will need to cut that down as well. Uh, my fence is 800 mils long because my whole jig is 800 mils long and so I ended up with a little piece of T-Track off cut. Again, wasn't really useful for anything because it was too small. But you might make your decide to make your whole board longer. That's okay too. Um, any longer and you might find it is just getting a bit unwieldy and you'll just need to de design that in accordance with your table saw and, and what kind of work you end up doing. So as well as your T-Track, you also have two miter sliders. Like I said, these are 450 mil long each and they will sit next to each other on the underside of your jig. There's enough screws in the packet to do all the bits and pieces that you need. The screws for the miter sliders are a little bit thicker than the screws for the T-Tracks. You'll need to pre-drill the T-Track uh, with, with a four mil drill bit. You don't need to countersink them, even though they are countersunk screws. If you do countersink them, the screws will end up going through uh, this 18 mil board. It is important that you are using 18 mil board or above. If you use 16, those screws will come through the bottom and that won't be any good for your jig because it won't slide along your table saw. The other components you have are all of the T-Track bolts and hardware. So you've got two of these star knobs, which are gonna be your end hold downs, and they come with uh, little T-Track bolts as well. You've got three of these smaller uh, T-Track knobs, and I use them for my center hold downs and also to create a little sliding stop, which I'll go through in a second. And then you've got these red and black hold downs, which actually you will help you clamp your material down onto the jig. In order to do the cutouts in your piece of MDF, you're gonna need a couple of router bits. The easiest way that I found to do this was to use a 19 mil uh, straight router bit to do my channels. You just need to set the depth so that these T-Track sit perfectly inside the board, but a 19 mil bit will give you the correct width. And then to cut out these little channels in my uh, stop and on my fence, I used an eight mil straight bit. Just double check that is eight mil. Yep, an eight mil straight bit. And that perfectly fits those T-Track bolts. So I used that a couple of times on here, 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 and here. Again, there are ways you could do this with an eight mil drill bit instead if you didn't want a channel, but you really need to be able to have that channel to give you the flexibility to slide this fence back and forth and put it on different angles. If you just had two holes, as you rotate this fence to get a different angles, the distance between those uh, tracks actually gets further apart in relation to this fence. So that's why you need the play of those slots rather than just putting an eight mil hole in each one.